The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Welcome to The Life You Want is Yours. This is Johanna Kern. Our show is dedicated to living, loving, and having the happiest, healthy, successful, and abundant life. We are giving you helpful tools to build such life. Yes, all of us are capable of living such life, and it doesn't have to be difficult or hard to build it. Patrick Kern, my husband, as usual, accompanies me on today's show. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. We are meeting on air every week at the same time. Here is the recap of our previous shows. Johanna told us that In this show, we don't disregard anybody's preferences or beliefs. We only show you various angles and help you to expand your consciousness. This show is meant for everybody, no matter what is your background, age, gender, belief system, or lack of it. It is important to us that you will understand that. Our life is our own journey, and only we can decide which route we want to choose, what we want to experience, where we want to arrive, and in whose company. When we get used to a situation that doesn't benefit us anymore, but we have learned how to operate and survive under the circumstances, such situation becomes our habitual safety. It means that we got stuck in our subconscious fears. Remember, you are worth living the most wonderful life. We don't need to be stuck in a stream of circumstances and perpetuate what's no longer satisfying. Contrary to some beliefs, our destiny is not a fixed thing. It doesn't take hard work or struggle to change what we want. We also learned how we create our reality with our thoughts. According to recent developments in science, the structure of the universe with all its laws and forces implies that intelligence existed prior to matter and only because people identify with their body they believe that when their body perishes their consciousness will too. We already know from Einstein, Tesla and other scientists such as Peter Higgs and Francois Englert who received the Nobel Prize in 2013 that everything that exists is simply energy. What does it mean? It means that everything that is material, measurable by our senses, and all that we can only perceive, our thoughts, emotions, or electrons, being a part of one huge energy field, vibrates. And although nobody has ever seen or weighed an electron, just as nobody has seen or weighed an emotion or a thought. They all behave in the same way, affect how we function, how we progress and live our life. Our thoughts vibrate just as radio waves, and just like with radio waves, our thoughts are being sent out to reach, well, whatever they can reach. And what they can reach depends on the frequency of their vibrations, and that decides how our thinking affects the reality, or rather the illusion of reality, that we create and co-create, whether we are aware of it or not. And we compare the latest discoveries in science with what some of the many philosophical religious beliefs have been saying. While science talks about everything being a part of one huge energy field, many belief systems talk about God being all there is and containing everything within. No matter whether it is science or a belief system that resonates the most with our own inner truth, some things remain the same. We are all part of one whole and we are all connected. 
Our awareness depends on how we let ourselves progress as the consciousness that we are. It is all up to us. We decide who we are and who we want to become. We are the consciousness that experiences itself through our life and has a choice to progress or not. Consciousness is what it is, a vibration, a current, a signal. Not long ago, the medical field talked about consciousness as being related to our senses. There is even an existing term we use when someone faints. We say then that the person is unconscious. However, now, as we can see, we need to make a difference between the consciousness of our senses and the consciousness that we are beyond our senses, not being limited to our body. And that is the consciousness we talk about during our shows. We also talked about our subconscious programming. According to science, our subconscious rules 90% of our thinking and behavior. It is responsible for our habits, emotions, automatic reactions, defensive mechanisms, etc. Remember, the subconscious programming, which may keep you stuck in unwanted situations in life, can be changed to whatever you want it to be. There are tools helping you to do so, and we share them with you during our shows. You, and only you, decide what you want and what you don't want. It is your birth-given right to live the happiest, healthy, successful, and abundant life. And it doesn't have to be difficult or hard to change things and make them the way you want them to be. It can be done. As a matter of fact, it has been done by many others that you might admire and even envy their successful and happy lives. And now it is your turn to live the life you want. Johanna also told us that when we are faced with overwhelming tasks or stressful situations, it is important to remember that no matter what, we all are capable of doing what's needed. Yes, we do have the strength. With no exceptions, all of us can perform well under stress and be at our best at any required point. We are the heroes. It is our human nature. As a human race, we have proven that over and over again, in various circumstances, we can always find the strength within, look the impossible in the face and say, I don't take no for an answer. We have not been defeated, we survived, and we have an ongoing opportunity to prove how strong, wise, and trustworthy we are. Yes, we can trust ourselves. If only for that one thing, we are survivors and we don't easily back off when we are fighting for what is important or dear to us. If for whatever reason we have forgotten about that, we can simply flash back to our past success and remember that since we did it before, we can do it again. All of us can recall such situations, whether in our private life or at work, when we were faced with the impossible and we made it possible. This is our true nature. Let's have a quick look at that. As human species, we are greatly disadvantaged comparing to other animals. We don't have fair to help us survive in the cold. Our fangs can't really defend us. We can't see or hear as well as other animals. Can't run fast enough. Our offsprings are helpless for years, etc., etc. If we look back at all the climate changes and the disasters on our planet, we need to wonder how on earth have we ever survived? Yes, the first thing that comes to mind is that we knew how to organize teams and support each other for the greater good of us all. 
But we also need to remember that any team, no matter how small or how large, consists of individuals. And as individuals, we humans are awesome. We are capable of the most beautiful things, and we are capable of becoming heroes in the blink of an eye. Open your heart. Look inside to find out what you truly want and need to bring to the world. Then go for it. You are the opportunity of your lifetime. The one and only that counts and is for real. Everything else can be repeated, duplicated or dismissed. Not you. You are unique and your life journey is unique. Don't look outside to find your strength because you can find it only inside. And once you find it, nothing is impossible for you. We also gave you the next step in the game. Nine pennies can change your life. A game that can help you change any life situation and achieve what you want. We will give you the next step in that game later in this show. Today we will talk about how to stop sabotaging our success. What contributes to our subconscious fear of success and how to deal with it? Why is it that many of us never reach for their dreams or never achieve fulfillment in their life. What hides behind the stories of failing just before achieving success? I also invite you to visit my blog on my official site www.johannakern.com You will find there many articles that can help you overcome stressful situations and create the life you want. We talk about such topics in more details during our shows and I answer some of the questions in the later part of each show. Thank you for sending me your questions. I won't be able to answer them all, but I usually choose those which best represent the majority of the questions related to the show's topic. If you would like to ask me a question and get an answer on air, you can email me at radio at johannakern.com. We do not reveal your identity while answering your question. After the break, we'll talk about the ways we sabotage our own success and how to deal with our subconscious fear of success. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Have you ever experienced a sudden turn for worse in your life? Just when things started to go well and you were about to make positive changes in life or achieve your goal? Many of us have. Do you remember what happened then? Perhaps due to your own actions or lack of them or because of some unpredicted events. You didn't reach your goal. You didn't succeed. Often when we look back at such situations, we know exactly what happened. We, ourselves, for some unexplained reason, ruined our chance for success. It could be that we have reached our desired weight and then gained 10 pounds over holidays. Or, we have overcome a bad habit and then fell off the wagon. Perhaps we found our dream man, woman, but became distant and mean and that person left us. Or on our way to an important business meeting, we took a detour and got stuck in the traffic. So we never got that job or made that deal. Sometimes, it is obvious that our actions, thoughts, or attitude sabotage our efforts. Sometimes, however, we are left wondering why we had such a bad luck or why things fell apart despite our hard work. The answer might be a bit shocking to us. 
whether we are aware of it or not, many of us have tendency to self-sabotage our success. Deep in our subconscious, we fear success. And so, driven by that subconscious fear, we sabotage our own happiness. Most scientists and psychologists agree that the fear of success is similar to the fear of failure. It doesn't matter either if you are a woman or a man. The fear of success can subconsciously haunt you, resulting in you repeatedly sabotaging your goals and dreams. The reasons for developing the fear of success may vary from person to person. It might be that you subconsciously believe that you won't be able to maintain your success and will eventually fail anyway. It might be that you subconsciously believe that you are not good enough to reach for your dreams, or it might be that you associate success in your mind with things that you subconsciously believe to be negative, wrong, or even disgusting. You might subconsciously believe that to achieve success in life you need to be cunning, ruthless, arrogant, bullying, heartless, etc. You might even hold resentment in your heart toward some successful people whom, for whatever reason, you despise and do not want to end up being like them. Or you may feel some level of guilt or shame when you see less fortunate members of your family or co-workers who hadn't had any success. Or what you are striving for is not what you really, truly want on a deeper level. It might be that what your environment perceives as success doesn't really speak to you. And because you haven't yet discovered what you really want, you strive for what's labeled as success by the society or your environment, but really have no interest in it in your heart. You always need to find out what's in your heart before you set your foot on the path to success. We talked about the steps to discovering your inner truth in our previous shows. You can find them in our archives. What happens when the fear of success drives our life or when our inner truth doesn't agree with what we want to achieve? We may avoid or procrastinate on big projects, especially if they could lead to recognition. We may compromise our own agenda or goals so that it won't cause any problems or conflicts in our family, at work, or organization. We may sabotage our own efforts just moments before achieving our dreamed of or thoroughly planned success. Or we might give up already at the beginning and never start working on our plans at all. If you find out that any of these is applicable to you, you might have an unconscious fear of success and its symptoms are often similar to the symptoms of the fear of failure. It is because your fear of success is rooted in your imprinted belief that success will bring you sorrow. You might believe that success alienates one from their family because of working longer hours or being asked for favors and money. You might be afraid that you will be criticized more when you are higher up and that your friends or family will react to you with jealousy, cynicism, and that you might lose your loved ones. You simply might be afraid that upon accomplishing your goals, you will intensely regret that you didn't act sooner. Whatever reason hides behind your fear of success, it is effectively sabotaging your happiness. 
How to overcome the fear of success? Here are a few simple steps. Step 1. Ask yourself the following questions. Do I really think that it is better to be unhappy in an unhappy crowd instead of proving to others that everything is possible and if I can succeed, they could too? Do I actually believe that my family or friends are happier because I haven't achieved my success yet? Am I sure that my success needs to lead to disappointments and bring me sorrow in the end? If so, what makes me think that way? Is my inner truth in conflict with how my environment sees success? What can I do to find out what I really want? What would make me happy in my life? Ask yourself similar questions, bringing to the surface each of the issues that may subconsciously sabotage your life. Answer them truthfully on a piece of paper. Compare pros and cons. Step 2. Notice and accept the simple fact. In order to be happy, you need to look inside and find out what your own truth is. Remember, you have your own unique purpose in life. In order to be happy, you need to fulfill it. You need to find your own inner truth and align your dreams with it. Not fulfilling your purpose and giving up on your dreams will definitely bring you sorrow. You can be sure of that. Step 3. Notice that every human being on this planet lives his, her, own unique life. Every single person has a choice how to stay pure in their heart and how to conduct their own actions. There is no need to succeed in any way that is not in harmony with what you hold as precious and important. You are not a number in statistics. Whatever or whoever made you think that way is wrong. You are a unique being, one in billions with your own story to tell. You can be successful on your own terms. You do not need to behave in any other way than that which is true to you. Step 4. Realize that whole nature expresses itself through thriving, blooming and joy. We humans are part of that nature. Our natural expression of ourselves, in its very nature, is thriving and joy. That means that success understood as the expression of who we are is a natural thing in our life. Not what society pushes on us, labeling it as success, that is having power, lots of money, fame, etc. Of course, there is nothing wrong with having that, as long as it is in alignment with whom we are, expressing what is true to us deep inside, fulfilling our own purpose is what is the real success we need to achieve in life, so that we could bloom, thrive and be joyous just the way nature intended us to be. Find out what's in your heart and go for it. Once you do so, unless your subconscious fears or ego drives kick in, you'll never sabotage your success again. You were born to be successful. Accept it. Look into your heart and bring to light what's most important to you. Don't listen to your fears and get rid of your subconscious programming. Go for the real success. You were born to succeed and it's time to fulfill your destiny. And now I would like you to relax and repeat after me a very useful affirmation. Repeating such positive statements is very important 
when we are reprogramming our subconscious for positive thinking. It is also important to use such statements in the appropriate moments so that our subconscious could accept our messages. Our shows provide such positive environment and timing for us to send appropriate messages to our subconscious. The affirmation comes from my book 365 plus 1 Affirmations to Create a Great Life and goes as follows. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me if I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Well done, everyone. We will repeat this affirmation again at the end of the show during our usual short relaxation routine when I will be guiding you to help you in the process of reprogramming your subconscious. In our shows, we talk about how to live the life we want and I always give you more useful tips to change what you need to change to build and achieve what you want. After the break, I will answer some of your questions. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Our first question is from Stacy. I am my worst enemy. Anytime I get excited about someone, I end up sabotaging my relationship. Just recently, I broke up with my boyfriend. I mean, it was another boyfriend and another breakup. I don't seem to hold on to any relationship for too long. The weirdest thing is that I tend to leave the guys when the relationship starts going very well. Why do I do that? Can this be helped? I have enough of always walking around with my broken heart, constantly bothering my friends with my sad stories. Some of the most common subconscious fears that make us sabotage our relationships are fear of rejection, fear of getting hurt, fear of losing one's freedom, and fear of inadequacy. Any of these fears, or combinations of them, may hugely affect us from our subconscious, not letting us develop a truly happy relationship. If that is the case, in order to better understand ourselves and before we start to heal and take steps to make changes in our life, we need to thoroughly examine our behavioral and thinking patterns. I know it sounds very clinical, but unfortunately, if we want to better understand ourselves and live the life we want instead of the one we don't want, it's best to take responsibility for our own happiness and do what needs to be done. Look into yourself. What kind of imprinted beliefs make you judge yourself and others based on the expectations, demands of the societies or your family's standards? Write down your thoughts on paper. It is easier to distance oneself from own thoughts that way. Think back to your childhood. Where did it all start? Have there been particular situations that you can recall now? Or was it an overall atmosphere that affected your attitude toward relationships? Once you answered these questions, 
you need to remember these things. We tend to play out negative old behavioral patterns with the people we get close to. And so, when everything goes well in our relationship, boom! Things we suppressed in our subconscious tend to come out. That's why we might sabotage the very best thing that happened to us. We might indulge in our critical inner voices. We might create the circumstances in which we repeat the drama from our own childhood. As for instance, being abandoned as a child, we may subconsciously expect that we will be abandoned as an adult by the very person we opened our heart to. We are afraid to trust anyone and expect the worst. And then, of course, we prefer to leave someone before that person will leave us. When we are stuck in such a vicious circle, we can't logically reason, and all we want to do is to avoid being hurt again. Or it might be that someone broke our heart in the past, and we want to avoid such situation, still being stuck in the old pain. Or we had been criticized heavily in the past, and we subconsciously believe that we don't deserve anything good because we are not good enough. We might think that we are too ugly, too stupid, too boring, to this or to that. What to do when we discover such painful truth about what's hiding in our subconscious? We need to start from changing our subconscious programming and imprint in our subconscious positive beliefs about ourselves. Tools that may help you are available on the market and you can find something that suits you. Take, for instance, my book, 365 plus 1, Affirmations to Create a Great Life, or some of the CDs I recorded to be listened to during a deep relaxation state while I guide the listeners to reprogram their subconscious. These or similar tools could be very helpful on your way to living the life you want. The next important thing to remember is that dwelling on your past might not only trigger your subconscious fears, but also make you miss the opportunities on your way. Your past is your past. No matter how painful or glorious it was, you are living your life right here and right now. Focus on your present, distance yourself from your past and appreciate this beautiful moment. That's the key to living a joyous life. Your past exists only in your memory. Your future is nothing but a vision which may or may not come to existence. Your life and your happiness happen in the now. I hope this will help you to understand why you keep sabotaging your relationships and take a different approach to your life. I wish you the very best. You fully deserve it. Now it's time you too will start enjoying your beautiful life. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. This question is from Mark. I really want to succeed in my career, but anytime I get close to achieving what I really want, something happens and I end up in a pile of dust, way behind my competitors. Sometimes it is my own fault. Sometimes I am being overlooked. Or suddenly some private matters take me away from where I need to be. I don't understand what's going on. Why others can easily achieve what I have been striving for over seven years and got nowhere. Is there something wrong with me? I am well educated and I consider myself to be an intelligent person. Why is it that I can't get in life where I want to be? It seems to me that you got stuck in the idea of not succeeding and indeed 
it became your self-fulfilling prophecy. Your past failures do not determine neither your present nor your future. It is important to change that kind of thinking because it makes you feel like a victim, which you are not. Just because you failed several times before does not mean that you can't achieve what you want the most. Do you know how many times numerous successful people failed before they achieved their success? No? I thought so. When you do some research about them, you might find out that they failed many more times than they succeeded. However, that didn't stop them, and they got in life where they wanted to be. I think that the most important thing to ask yourself is, what is it that I truly want? You write about your desire to succeed, but you don't tell us what it is that you want to succeed in. It seems like your drive to be accomplished, recognized, and awarded is more important to you than what you actually do. You don't speak of your passion for what you do. You don't even mention how much you know about your field or how much you would like to learn or why you have chosen what you do. Instead, you only complain about not succeeding yet, since in your books you should do it by now. I wonder how much pressure your family, your parents, put on you when you were a child. Did they expect you to be a model child that they wanted to show off at every occasion? Have you ever been taught about real values of life? Or were you told that you mean nothing if you are not successful in life? Have you been appreciated for who you are or only rewarded with money or recognition when you got good grades at school? Were you encouraged to be compassionate and honest? Or were you expected to be competitive and emotionally detached? I believe that you have missed out on being the real you and made into a man whose life runs on automatic pilot with a default programming to keep achieving and coming first at all cost. You need to stop the vicious cycle of striving for success and failing at living. Otherwise, you not only fail at achieving your goals, but also fail at becoming who you were meant to be. Think of your life as an opportunity for you to express who you are. Trust that your inner truth will show you what it is that you need to succeed in instead of perpetuating some old programming that neither brings you happiness nor real success in life. This is your life. You are living your own story. Perhaps you never knew that. Whoever robbed you of your beautiful self was probably also programmed for living life in fear of not being enough and not deserving happiness unless one's existence is justified by some big achievements. The only thing you need to succeed in is being fully yourself. You are unique. Your life is a unique journey and you have the right to choose its destination according to what's in your heart. Please listen to our previous shows to find out how we can learn our own genuine truth and how to fulfill our purpose in life. And then learning how to be happy in life will be your next step. Succeeding in the career that you obviously don't care about will not bring you happiness, no matter how hard you try. And that is why it hasn't happened this far. Your own heart, your own inner truth have spoken to you, letting you know that you still 
need to find your own path. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you. Good luck. You have a lot to do, but you are a hard worker, and I am sure you will do an excellent job finding who you are deep inside and then bring into the world all the gifts you are supposed to share with us. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. And now it's time for the next step in our game. Nine pennies can change your life. Step 8. Put one investment penny into your Better Life account. That is, put one IP in your BLA. For those of you who don't know what we are talking about, please go to my blog on my official site and find the description of the Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life game. There will be a point in your journey when you will take a good look at what you have achieved and what's behind you. In this step, you learn to stay alert and not miss opportunities. Having perspective and distancing yourself from your past and your efforts is very important while you are assessing your achievements. If you are focusing on the past, you might either get discouraged or, by indulging in past victories, miss the opportunity at hand. It is very important to concentrate at what's at hand and live in the present instead of getting caught in the past. Stay alert and pay attention to the present. Remember, the game is not over until it is over. Time limit? None. However, you can move to the next step in the game in one week. There might be several moments when you will be looking back or assessing your present situation. Reference. In our story, the younger brother didn't dwell on what he had achieved while looking back at what he had left behind. He kept a distance from his past and stayed alert. That's why he didn't miss the strangers passing by. Had he let himself dwell on the past, forgetting to pay attention to the here and now, he would have missed the friendly man and the opportunity to be accepted in their land. Distant yourself from your past. Stay alert at all times. Have fun with it. Don't worry if you don't remember the story in the game or how to do the eighth step. You can go to my official website www.johannakern.com and find the Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life game on my blog. After each show, we are adding there the next steps in the game. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. As usual, it is time for our short relaxation. I will be guiding you now to repeat some affirmations to help you to reprogram your subconscious and deal with your subconscious fears. The affirmations come from my book 365 plus 1 Affirmations to Create a Great Life. The book contains a step-by-step -step program which I designed based on many years of experience in counseling people to help them achieve what they wanted the most. I also recorded some CDs which can be listened to in a state of a deep relaxation while I am guiding the listeners through the process of reprogramming their subconscious. Such tools and similar to them are very effective and you can always find on the market whatever suits your preferences and needs. Remember, while you are changing your thinking to be more positive, you need to also deal with your subconscious programming so that it won't sabotage your efforts to create the life you want. And now, please relax and listen to the following.
find a comfortable position, sitting or lying down. Close your eyes and let your arms rest alongside your body. Good. Now take a deep breath and slowly let it out. Take another deep breath and again slowly let it out. Then, while taking in the next breath, let it fill you up from toes to head and add an image to it, a pleasant dim light glowing everywhere inside you. Keep breathing and observing the light inside from the count of ten to one. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax and let the dim light inside shine in every single cell in your body. Good. In order to reprogram your subconscious for the life you want, you need to learn how to replace your negative thinking with positive thoughts. Your life is not your enemy. Your life is your loyal friend. Acknowledge it. Appreciate it. You are worth living the most wonderful life. Repeat after me in your mind. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me. If I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being. One in billions with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Well done. Remember, the life you want on the subconscious level is already yours. And now you will learn how to access it so that you can start living it in your day-to-day -day reality. You have learned a lot from your past and now you can be free from it any hardship you have experienced has only made you stronger, wiser, and more compassionate. Repeat in your mind, I will treasure what I have learned through suffering and struggling as a good lesson about who I am. I know that I am powerful. I know that I can trust and respect myself. I completely release my past and live in the now. Well done. You can move forward now 
in your life. The life you want can be yours. Make it your reality. Enjoy it and love it. You are a powerful creator and you will get what you want and live the life you want. Now you can open your eyes at the count of one to five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Excellent. You've done very well. You are fully relaxed, yet energized and happy to continue with your day. Thank you for participating. In the next show, I will respond to more of your questions. And, as usual, we will talk more about what we can do to live the life we want. And if you would like me to answer your question on air, please send me an email to this address, radio at johannakern.com. You will, of course, remain anonymous. Have a beautiful time. Till we meet again. Have a good one. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern.